Welcome back, everyone. Time for us to go behind the headlines. And the story that we brought you last week had to do with the warrant that had been served in a criminal case, a federal investigation, and had been served to the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. This was back in November that the warrant was served. And apparently the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program uh, complied with it, did not fight this warrant whatsoever. We now have a copy of this search and seizure warrant. This is uh, case number 12-MC-382. And uh, the the warrant was executed on November 20th. Uh, it was filled out on November 6th. But uh, the warrant was executed November 20th, 2012 at the uh, offices of the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. And from now, I, I do want to point out that uh, I'm not going to release the names of the people uh, or the addresses that were served in this warrant because I believe these people are innocent until proven guilty. And it does nothing to help the story to identify exactly who they are. In fact, it might uh, cause them some harm in that, uh, I don't know, they could be targeted uh, for rips or whatever. So we will keep that private, but I will give you details as far as what they were looking for. The uh, attachment A in the warrant says the items to be searched for, seized and examined are the premises and or items described in more detail in attachment B that contain evidence and instrumentalities of narcotics manufacturing and trafficking and conspiracy to commit narcotics manuf manufacturing and trafficking offenses. And uh, this would be items to be seized cover the period from April 1st, 2011 through November 5th, 2012. So over a year long investigation here. And apparently the belief of the feds here is the Oregon medical marijuana program being used as a cover for interstate narcotics trafficking. That would be marijuana. They are uh, searching for the names, addresses, telephone numbers, birth dates, Oregon driver's license numbers, other government issued ID numbers for patients, growers, and caregivers in the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program. Also searching for Oregon Medical Marijuana applications, registration information that includes the record number, issue date, effective date, expiration date, and audit number, as well as any denial of applications for patients, growers, and caregivers in the program. And also searched items to be searched and seized include identification of persons associated with marijuana manufacture and distribution, evidence of communications between members of the conspiracy, and evidence to use the apparently legitimate Oregon Medical Marijuana Program participants to disguise profits from drug trafficking. Now, they list the properties to be searched. Now, in the properties to be searched, they list three separate addresses in Long Creek, Oregon, and one address in Stanfield, Oregon. These locations would be kind of in the north central, maybe northeastern corner of Oregon, very rural areas. And there are 13 different names that are listed here where they're looking for the record information on these people as patients, caregivers, or growers. But to me, the part that is most disturbing about this is in the last four parts of the exhibit where they, they want the names and addresses and other contact information for all patients, caregivers, and or growers that have a grow site listed at, and then they list the four separate addresses, three in Long Creek and one in Stanfield. And here's where this is problematic. They are talking about a conspiracy here as part of the charges that they're racking up uh, but yeah, here we go. Uh, conspiracy to commit narcotics manufacturing and trafficking offenses. Now, one of the things that makes this a huge problem in the Oregon Medical Marijuana Program is that patients are required by law to list a grow site address. Even if they're not growing marijuana, they're required by law to list a grow site address. Even if they don't have a grower. They're required to list a gross site address. So, you know, th this has been known, you know, people will list the address of a city park or city hall or the sheriff's house, you know, because you can put down any address so long as it's in Oregon and you're indicating that will be the place you will grow marijuana plants if you're ever going to grow marijuana plants. So we have a situation here where the 13 people they're looking out after here. And again, speculation at this point, we have no evidence, but if indeed they are growing and trying to use patient cards to cover their numbers, to cover their grow numbers, this may be involving people in a conspiracy who have no idea that they're being involved in a conspiracy. These may be people who are just putting down an address because a friend told, oh, put down Bob's address, put down Joe's address, they'll be fine. And they have no idea that this is going to get them sucked into some sort of federal investigation.
And this will have a chilling effect on the Oregon medical marijuana program as the next few people who are already jumping through the exorbitantly high hoop of a $200 fee just to register and another $50 to list a grower may not want to do that so much anymore if this shows that they can get sucked into some sort of conspiracy charge at a federal level. So I really hope that as this uh, investigation continues that uh, we don't see innocent patients being pulled into this this dragnet by the federal government desperate to try to shut down to try to stifle the Oregon medical marijuana program because that's what it seems they're trying to do and very disappointed in the Oregon medical marijuana program for not fighting this harder for not calling up attorneys to try to protect patient confidentiality because that should be the most paramount thing they do Think for $200 you could keep our name secret, huh? This is just another fishing expedition. Another attempt to try to delegitimize medical marijuana leading up to the elections. Oh, have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. Have you ever met that funny reefer man? A reefer man. If he said he swam to China, he would send you South Carolina. Then you know you're talking to that reefer man. Hey guys, Nico Escondido, High Times Magazine, here with another video grow tip of the week. We're here in a a little hydroponic garden. It's, uh, it's a very manageable operation. Uh, some of you might be doing something similar at home or thinking of it. And we just wanted to show you a little bit about the, the feeding system, the irrigation system, if you will, that they've implemented in this grow room. Because it's one of the more popular varieties these days. It's, it's very simple. It's a top feed hydro system. And if you just look right down here in the pot, you'll see right at the top they're using top hatch spray emitters, stake into the medium and they just are fed by spaghetti lines and they just do a little top feed. They just 